Imagine a land with scarce water. The blistering heat of the sun, the dry winds, the parched earth. This is the Sonoran Desert, a place where life seems nearly impossible. Yet over a thousand years ago, it was home to a remarkable civilization, the Hohokam. Now, when you think of deserts, you don't exactly think of water. But the Hohokam did. They were masters of the arid land, canal builders extraordinaire. In this inhospitable environment, they created a network of canals that stretched over a thousand miles longer than the distance from Los Angeles to Seattle. And they achieved this monumental feat using nothing but simple hand tools. These canals were more than just ditches in the sand. They were the lifelines of the Hohokam society, bringing precious water from the Salt and Gila rivers to their settlements and fields. The Hohokam were, in essence, irrigation rock stars, turning the barren desert into fertile farmland. But the Hohokam didn't stop at merely digging canals. They took it a step further. They lined some of their canals with clay, a smart move that minimized water loss through seepage. This was no small innovation. It demonstrated a deep understanding of the environment and a keen ability to adapt and innovate. And get this, this technique of lining canals with clay, first used by the Hoakam over a millennium ago, is still used in modern irrigation systems today. It's a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of the Hohokam, who carved a life out of the desert and thrived against all odds. They truly were the masters of the arid land. The Hohokam weren't just ditch diggers. They were also architects of a unique desert lifestyle. Picture this, a scorching day in the Sonoran Desert. But the Hohokam are chilling, literally. They built pit houses, cool abodes dug into the earth, providing relief from the heat. These homes were the heart of their communities, where families lived, worked, and played. But the Hohokam's social life extended beyond their pit houses. They built ball courts, the first of their kind in North America. These courts were social hubs where people gathered for games and festivities. Think of it as the desert's version of a modern-day sports arena. The Hohokam's creativity wasn't confined to architecture. They were also skilled artisans. Their pottery, decorated with intricate geometric patterns and symbolic animal designs, reveals a society rich in artistic expression. Each piece tells a story, offering a glimpse into their beliefs and way of life. And here's the kicker. The Hohokam were also trading whizzes. Despite living in an arid desert, they managed to acquire marine shells, likely through a vast trade network spanning hundreds of miles. These shells were crafted into jewelry, showing that the Hohokam had a flair for fashion. But here's the surprising thing, they also had a vast trade network, acquiring shells from hundreds of miles away. So the next time you think of a desert, picture a thriving society full of vibrant social life, artistry, and commerce. That's the Hohokam way. Around the 13th century, things get interesting. Enter the Salado people, a group believed to have connections with the ancestral Puebloans. The desert stage was set for a fascinating cultural interplay. The Salado and Hohokam civilizations coexisted for a while, their lives and cultures intertwining in the harsh landscape. The influence of Salado can be glimpsed in Hohokam architecture, suggesting a level of exchange and interaction between these two distinct cultures. Picture this, a melting pot of ideas right here in the vast expanse of the desert. But here's the twist. As mysteriously as they appeared, the Salado people vanished. By the 15th century, they were gone, leaving behind only traces of their existence. This sudden disappearance has puzzled historians and archaeologists for years. What happened? Why did they leave? These questions remain unanswered, adding an intriguing layer to the history of the Sonoran Desert. The Salado intrigue is a desert mystery that continues to baffle us. As we dig deeper, we uncover more questions than answers. We know they were here, we know they interacted with the Hohokam, but the details of their story remain shrouded in mystery. Archaeologists are still piecing together how these two groups interacted. The desert holds many secrets and the Salado people are one of its most enigmatic riddles. Around the 1450s, the Hohokam civilization abruptly declined. This once thriving society, the desert Houdinis who masterfully manipulated their arid environment, suddenly disappeared from the historical record, leaving behind an enigma that has puzzled scholars for centuries. Theories about their disappearance are as diverse as they are numerous. 
One theory posits that prolonged periods of drought may have led to the Hohokam's downfall. With their survival heavily dependent on their intricate canal systems, any disruption to their water supply could have had catastrophic effects. A few dry years could have strained their resources, leading to crop failures and eventual societal collapse. Another hypothesis suggests that social unrest or warfare played a part in their disappearance. As the population grew and resources became scarcer, competition could have escalated into conflict. Evidence of burned houses and defensive structures lend some weight to this theory, hinting at possible internal strife or external threats. Some researchers also propose that overuse of land and resources, coupled with a changing climate, might have led to environmental degradation, making the area uninhabitable over time. However, these are just theories, educated guesses based on the limited evidence we have. The true reason behind the Hohokam's disappearance remains shrouded in mystery. What we do know is that their sudden decline was a complex process, likely due to a combination of factors rather than a single cause. Archaeologists are still digging for answers. The Hohokam story isn't over. Their tale continues to unfurl in the desert sands, whispered in the wind, and echoed in the modern lives of the Pima and Tohono O'odham peoples of Arizona. These communities hold traditions and practices that hint at a fascinating possibility. They might be the descendants of the Hohokam, the original desert dwellers. Intriguing, isn't it? Imagine being the living link to a civilization that thrived in an arid land over a thousand years ago. But these links are not just in stories or traditions, they're etched in the land itself, in the very fabric of everyday life. The Hohokam were master irrigators, remember? Their impressive canal systems transformed the harsh desert into a fertile oasis. And it seems their genius didn't just evaporate into thin air. Today, the Pima and Tohono O'odham peoples use irrigation techniques strikingly similar to those of the Hohokam. Their farming methods, perfected over centuries, owe a great deal to the ingenious water management of their possible ancestors. So the Hohokam's influence didn't just survive, it thrived, shaping the very landscape of modern Arizona. Their spirit, their ingenuity, their resilience, it's all still here, echoing in the desert. The Hohokam's legacy lives on, a testament to their enduring spirit. The Hohokam story is full of amazing facts. Their remarkable adaptation to the arid land, their sophisticated society, and the intriguing mysteries they left behind have us hooked. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. Share with us which fact about the Hohokam surprised you the most. And if you enjoyed this journey through time, give us a thumbs up. Don't miss out on our future deep dives into history. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more explorations into the past.